In this video, we are going to solve for temperature using, you know, in this video, we are going to solve for temperature using the Lee-Kessler equation of state and also by using the trial and error method. The problem says, determine the temperature of two kilograms of acetylene contained in a 0 0.05 meters cubed vessel, vessel at 3.07 megapascals using Lee Kessler. So, we're trying to find temperature. Trying to find temperature. We know that the mass is two kilograms. The substance we're using is acetylene. You know, the volume is 0 0.05 meters cubed. Pressure is in 3.07 megapascals. And that the molar weight of acetylene, by looking it up, is 26.038 grams per kilogram mole, or in my case, I'm going to use kilograms per kilogram mole. All right. So the Kessler equation is PV equals ZNRT. We're looking for temperature. We know that mold is equal to mass over molar weight. So we replace the N for mass over molar mass. Then we solve for temperature. By using algebra, we get that temperature is equal to pressure times volume times molar weight over Z mass gas constant. And we replaced N or moles with mass over molar mass because we don't have moles given in our problem. However, we are given mass. All right. I need to determine what my R value is going to be. So R equals something. And I'll determine my R based off of the um, units I am given. I have meters cubed of megapascals, and then the, this can either be, uh, and then my mass is in kilograms, so that's why I picked my molar mass to be in kilograms. So let's go ahead and see if we have any R values that match this, or matches these units. So this is in liters, so no, this is in centimeters cubed feet cubed, centimeters cubed, we're not even talking about joules. This one's in meters cubed. However, it's gram mole and Pascal, so maybe this one, I don't know. Definitely not the centimeters cubed one, nor this one. We, this one is liters. This one has meters cubed. And also have kilogram moles. I'm actually going to choose this one, even though the pressure is not in megapascals. Because at the end of the day, I will be converting the pressure into bars. Because my critical pressure is give, will be given to me in bars. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this one as our R value, and the reason why I do it is because I know that my critical pressure is given to me in bar. So let's go ahead and write it in my problem. So my R value is going to be 0 0.0833 one four and the units are 
meters cubed bar and then kilogram mole Kelvin. Alrighty, I know that in my megapascals, um, I don't want it in megapascals, I want it in bar. So I'm going to go ahead and just convert it. So pressure is equal to 30.7 bar. So great. Now I have my pressure matching in both my R value and my pressure. Okay. So in order to solve for temperature, I still need my Z. And you find Z by using the Lee Kessler formula. So Z is equal to Z naught plus the eccentric value, or I'm just going to call it W times Z prime. Our eccentric or my W number is tabulated. So I look at the back of my textbook and I look for acetylene and then it, it tells me what my W is. Or you can just look it up on Google. What's the eccentric value of acetylene? And it should be similar to the one I have, which is 0.184. Great. In order to solve for Z naught and Z prime, I need my reduced pressure and my reduced temperature. So for, the, for those, I will need my critical pressure and my critical temperature. So the critical pressure for acetylene is tabulated again in the back of my textbook. You can look it up on Google by searching up critical pressure of acetylene and it should be something similar to 61.4 bar. And my critical temperature as well, it's tabulated and it's 308.3 Kelvin for acetylene. acetylene. Great, I still need TR and PR. My reduced temperature is temperature over TC, and my PR is equal to P over PC. So great. TR is equal to my temperature, which I don't know. That's what I'm looking for, right? So there is the problem. Over 308. 0.3, which is my critical temperature, and my PR is 30.7 bar, which is my given temperature, divided by, I don't really care about the units anymore, divided by my critical pressure, which is 61.4, which gives us 0.5. So my PR, or my reduced pressure, is 0.5. So now, this is where my trial and error method begins. Because I can't really look up a Z0 value right now because I don't know what my reduced temperature is. And I don't know my reduced temperature because I don't know what my temperature is, which is the whole point of this problem. So this is where our trial and error method begins. So I'm going to label it trial and error method. There is another way of doing this by using the Newton's algorithm method of something. I don't know how to use that one. So I'm going to do the one that I do know how to do, which is the trial and error method. So what you do first is set up the equations you're going to need. So you're going to need equation one, which is your TR. So TR is equal to my temperature, which I'm looking for, over my critical pressure, which is 308.3. My second, the second equation you're going to need is your Z equals Z naught plus W Z prime. And then the third equation you'll need is temperature equals... And then your temperature equals um, this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in all the values that I know. So temperature is equal to my um, temperature, this one, yes. Temperature is equal to my pressure, which is 61.4 times 
our volume, which is 0 0.05, times our molar weight, which is 26 0.038 divided by our z value, which we do not know, times our mass, which is 2, and times our r value, which is 0 0.08314. When you go ahead and simplify this, you get that your t, your temperature, is equal to 480.7353 over your z value. Alrighty. And then from here, the next step is to make a table and start guessing and checking, which is why it's called the trial and error method. So the first column in your table is going to be your reduced temperature guess. So TR, guess. Your third column is going to be temperature, but your second, your third column is going to be your Z naught. Oops. T, Z naught. Then it's going to be your Z prime. Then it's going to be Z, your T calc. And yes, those are what you need. So again, this TR or this T right here comes from this T right here. And then we'll be using our TR and our PR. And we know that our PR is um, 0.5. We already found that before over here. And then your T calc is this T right here. And that T. Alrighty. And then we get this Z from equation number two right there. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and let's start. So we honestly, we just guessed a random TR, reduced temperature value. Just a random one. I'm going to go ahead and choose 1.2. I'm going to guess that my reduced temperature is 1.2. Then what I do is plug it into my equation 1. So my equation number 1 was TR is equal to T over 308. I'm going to read it, write it with the TR guess, which is 1.2 equals temperature over 308.3. And I get that my temperature is equal to 369.96 when I solve for that temperature. Alright, so now I put it in my table and... My temperature for here will be 369.96. Now, what I do is I look up my Z naught and my Z prime values using my TR guess and my actual reduced pressure. So I go to my Lee Kessler tables and then I look up where the TR and the PR. So TR is 1.2, my PR is 0.5, so the value I'll be using is, let's see, 1.2, and then 1.2, and then 0.5, 0.88, or 0.8994. And the Z prime value I'll be using, again, with my TR at 1.2 and my PR at 0.5 is going to be 0 0.0254.
great. So now I'm gonna go ahead and plug those into my table. Just try to be as organized as possible because we will be writing on a lot of numbers. And I put them in my table. My Z naught point eight nine nine four. My Z prime is point zero two five four. And then I calculate my Z using equation number two. So Z equals Z naught plus my eccentric value, which is W, and it's tabulated, and it's 0.184. So Z is equal to Z naught, which is 0.8994 plus 0.184, my eccentric value, times 0 0.0254. I get that my Z is equal to 0.9040. So I plug it in to my table. Perfect. And now I calculate my T calc by using equation number three. So T calc is equal to 480.7353 divided by Z, by 0.9040. And I get that my T calc is 531.7353. Three five, so five three one point seven four three five. And the way to know if this guess is correct is by your comparing your purple tea to your pink tea. So this tea right here and that tea right there. And if they match, great, you got the correct guess. If not, you just have to keep trying. So. I did not get the correct guess because 369 and 531 are not close at all. So I'm going to go ahead and just, again, guess a random number. And since they're not close, I'm going to go ahead and just pick something out of pocket. I'm going to say 2 since it's, 2 is way further. It's not close to 1.2. So I choose 2. And now I repeat the same process all over again. So... My TR guess is 2, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it in to equation number 1. So 2 equals T over 308.3. That means that my T is equal to 616.6. So I'm going to go ahead and write it on my table. And now I look for my Z naught and my Z prime in my Lee Kessler tables. Again, same exact process. So I open up my textbook, I go to my table, and I look up where my TR guess is at, so at 2, and my PR, which was 0.5. So 2 and then 0.5 will give us a value of 0.0387 for my Z prime, right? Because it's my Z prime table. And for my Z naught, I get, let's see, TR is 2. I get 0.9866. Great. I'm going to go plug those numbers in. That's my Z naught, by the way. I'm going to go ahead and plug them into my little chart table to keep myself organized. So my Z naught is 0.9866. My Z prime is 0 0.0387. Great. Now I calculate. See, it's the same process again. I calculate my Z using equation number two. Right. So my equation number two is Z is equal to Z naught plus WZ prime. I plug in the numbers that I have. So Z is equal to 0.9866 plus 0.184 times 0 0.0387. And I get that my Z is equal to 483.8032. So 
So my z is equal to I'm gonna go four eight three point eighty thirty two. Nope, just kidding. That's not what I was supposed to do at all. My bad. That's not my z value. My z value is equal to point nine nine. Three, seven. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down on my table. So point nine nine three seven. And now I calculate T, T calc. So T calc is 480.7353. So that my equation number three over Z. So over point nine nine. And we get that my T calc is equal to 483.8032. So 483.8032. And now I check my purple T and my pink T to check if they are the same. And I see here that absolutely not. They're not the same. And actually, Good news, they actually switched spots. So my T purple, my first T, was smaller than my T calc. And my first T, I guess. And my second T, I guess, my T purple, my first T, is now bigger than my T calc. So that means, usually, usually by the way, that means that my T, I guess, has to be in between 1.2 and 2. So we've narrowed down our TR guesses possibilities. So great. Now I just have to pick a random TR value between 1.2 and 2 to figure it out. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the TR guess of 1.5. Now I am not going to do this again, the same. I'm not going to show all my work for 1.5 because this video will be forever. But again, it's the same thing I did for when my TR guess for one for 1.2, the same method. I look for my T purple using equation one. And then with that TR guess and my PR of 0.5, I'm going to look up my Z naught and my Z prime in my Lee Kessler correlation tables and then calculate my, per my blue Z with equation number two. And then my T calculated my pink T using equation number three. And then check if my purple T and my pink T match. Okay, so if you do it right, you will get that your T purple T will be equal to 462. Your Z naught will be 0.9546. Your Z prime will be 0 0.0409. Your Z will be 0 0.9621. And your T calc will be 499.6729. So now, again, I'm going to compare my first T and my last T. And I see here, all right, we are getting closer. Okay, that's cool. So we're in, we're heading in the right direction. But now, which direction? Is it going to be 1.4? Should I go to 1.4 or 1.6? I don't know. We're going to have to try both. So I'm going to see if I can get closer with 1.4. If I don't get closer, I'm going to try 1.6. Because if it's not closer, if 1.4 gets further away than the values I have in 1.5, probably means I went the wrong way. So for 1.4, the values are 431 for your T, your first T, 431.62. Your Z naught is 0.9416. And your Z prime is 0 0.039. And then your Z will be 0.9533. And your T calc will be 504.2981. Okay, now I compare my first T and my last T. 
And I see here that they've gotten further away from each other. So I'm going to stop going closer to 1.2 and actually start getting closer to 2. So now I'm going to try 1.6. My T will be 4.93. My Z naught will be 0.9644. My Z prime will be 0 0.0415. My Z will be 0 0.9720. And my T calc will be 4.94.5653. And I see here that, oh, I'm going to use. My first tea or my purple tea is super close to my pink tea. Now, depending on how nice your teacher is, you can just say, oh, well, this is going to be my tea value. And honestly, depends on your teacher. My teacher would accept this. So what I would do is, so these two pretty close. in my opinion so uh, so take average ideally they will match exactly ideally so you could keep like guessing even a, a tr guess like 1.61 or 1.601 and try to get the value extreme close but i'm not going to waste my time and my teacher is nice enough to be fine with this so i'm just going to take the average of the two 493, oops, 493 plus 494.5653 divided by 2 will give me 493.78 Kelvin. So this will be the temperature of acetylene under these conditions. So this is probably the hardest type of problem you'll get using Lee Kessler because you have to use trial and method, trial and error method. And so that's how you'll do it if you're not given T, if you have to find T. However, they might also not give you, they might give you T and not give you P. So you'll do the same exact, you'll do this same exact process, but instead of TR guess, you're going to have PR guess. And then instead of T, you'll have, instead of purple T, you'll have purple P. And then instead of pink T calculated, you'll have pink P calculated. And you'll just follow the same process, but instead of the T's, you're solving for P's. So that's it for this example. I might do one more and show you how to do it when they don't give you pressure. But again, if you just follow the same exact method, so here... My equation three won't be T equals, it'll be P equals. And then you'll still have to find Z. So it should be, it should be extremely similar. So I don't know if I make another one or not, because this is one of, this is a long video. So that's it for this problem. Good luck with your studies.